Steve from Wrestling Observer. Nice to meet you. Rodrigo from Mexico City. Nice to meet you. So, uh, yeah, what's going on with Steve? Uh, so what went through your head during the call when you, you were, they told you you were fighting Calvin? Well, uh, I saw Paulo Tiago had gotten hurt, uh, so I kind of figured that they were probably going to give me a call, so I started looking up, uh, you know, some of his stats and stuff like that, and they called me the next day, and it was a good opportunity, so I was, uh, said, uh, you know, I wasn't injured or anything from the last fight, it went pretty well, so uh, I said, let's go. So, and what? To the, the competition. How's your body feeling? How's the process of being after so many years away from fighting? You know, getting two in a row. How's your body? How's everything? I feel good. Uh, you know, the, this is kind of a continuation of the last camp. So, uh, you know, like I said, no injuries or anything from before. So uh, I was able to get right back into training and, and go right back at it. And, uh, you know, I had a little time off and that probably helped, helped uh, you know, relax a little bit, nagging injuries that build up over time with training. Uh, so, but yeah, I felt good. So I just feel good. I feel really good. Had, had you heard rumblings that, that he was hurt and then, and then... I saw it on MMA Junkie. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you saw it there, and then you decided, hey, man, I bet you I could wind up getting I, that fight. I, yeah, that's what I thought. I thought, yeah, I think that because I kind of, you know, had a hint about it. I was like, yeah, I think they'll probably call me for that one because I, I told them I wanted to, you know, I wasn't injured after yeah. the fight. said, so, you know, I'll be ready for Houston is what I was looking for originally. And then when so when that opportunity came up, I was like, okay, yeah, let's do it. So you didn't have to reach reach out to, to Joe or anything like that on, no, on they, your own? They just no, called they you. called me and said, you know, hey, you know, this opportunity came up. It's I called my manager, and Mickey Doberly, and, and he yeah. gave me a call and said, hey, you, know, you want to do it? What so. goes through your head when, when, when you get that call? You know, you're thinking about it 24 hours earlier, and, yeah. and then it happens, you get kind of that for me, uh, you know, twinkle I, in your eye a little yeah, bit. Yeah, like, for cool. me, it's like, yeah, it's pretty neat, you know, because it's a main card fight. So, yeah. you know, especially, you know, after having time <laughs> off and then coming right back into it with one fight and then, you know, going to the main card feels pretty good. So. Well, what's this been like for you? I mean, you, you kind of... I don't want to say you were unknown, but yeah. to a lot of people, you unknown, certainly were. Yeah, for sure. And then all of a sudden, you know, you're a guy that a lot of people are talking about. Well, I, I enjoy it, man. I just enjoy competing. You know, my only goal, I've said a bunch of times when I first started uh, training, was to get a win in the UFC. You know, unfortunately, I was able to accomplish that with my last fight. Mm -hmm. And so the rest is just enjoying the ride. I, I, I work hard, I train hard, and, you know, I'm just having fun with it all and taking it fight by fight. So that's it. Speaking of popping up on people's radars, when you had that fight in the prelim and you got that knockout with one second left, yeah. talk, talk us through that, how that felt, and whether, whether you knew it would propel you to a stage like this. Well, it felt good. Uh, you know, I, I I felt good in there as soon as, you know, the, the fight came out. I felt his distance and his range. I felt like there were some things I could get in on. Uh, and then the, the last second, you know, was pretty exciting. thought maybe it was going to get knocked out of the night. And then when Weidman knocked out Anderson, of course, I was like, nope, that's gone. So I was like, let's go. So, uh, so yeah, but, uh, you know, it, it felt really good. And then the excitement of, of that, I think, was... Uh, kind of lost in the shuffle of the excitement with Weidman, you know, knocking out Anderson Silva, and that's fine, you know, the spotlight doesn't need to be on me, I just like to compete and come out here, and that's it, so you know, we'll, we'll see how this goes and hopefully everything turns out well. With, with a win like this, though, you could get the spotlight on you, and you know, not to say that, you know, your, your first win two months ago was a Cinderella story, and you're like, yeah, yeah but yeah, you yeah. could turn it into one pretty yeah. easily you know, with a win over a guy that's a, a kind of a high-profile guy right now. Right. So, uh, you know, it's definitely a great opportunity. You know, he's a great fighter and coming off of a, you know, highly publicized win and, and where he was an underdog, you know, just like I was. I was a huge underdog in that fight. And, and some people said that I didn't even belong there, which, you know, me and my teammates kind of laughed just because, you know, people forget, you know, after a year. So, uh, yeah, it's definitely a great opportunity. And, you know, I look forward to it. Were you able to go back and, you know, look at fights other than, than just his, his last fight? against Uriah Hall. Were you able to go back and look at sites saw, in the Tough House and things yeah, like that? Yeah, I saw a couple of them from there and, uh, you know, took a look at it. So I, I, I watch a little bit of film on usually my, my mm -hmm. opponents, but not too much, you know, that paralysis by analysis type of thing. So. What do you take out of, you know, what kind of what he brings to the table? Uh, well, he's, he's got good hands. I think his hands are underrated. You know, he's got good wrestling, good all around. So, uh, you know, he's a tough opponent everywhere. And, you know, I feel like I am as well. I feel like I'm prepared for you know, all aspects of MMA, and, you know, that's one thing since the beginning of my career, I've focused on everything to try to be able to compete in every aspect, so. With him dropping down, you know, from 15 pounds heavier, how does that weigh on you, you know, in the weeks leading up to the fight? You know, 
do you have to assume that he's going to be a little bit bigger than, than you in the fight? Standing uh, next to both of you guys, you don't look that much yeah, different I, in size. At I, this point. I think a, a lot of people think I'm smaller than I am because I was fighting the bean pole mm -hmm. and Seth Zinski's 6'3". <laughs> you know, I'm going to look small next to anybody that's 6'3". So, you know, he's a big guy, too, that, that came down from 185. Yeah. Uh, so, you know, but I, I fought at 185 in the amateurs, actually. I, I used to be, you know, 220 pounds. I sparred with heavyweights, so I'm used to, you know, going with bigger guys, stronger guys. I've been doing that for six, seven years, so I, I don't think it's going to play too much into it. Now, we heard Mike Dolce say that he thinks Gaslam could be a champion in two, maybe even three different weight classes. Do you think that you're versatile enough that you could be, you know, middleweight and welterweight at the same time? Uh, I think middleweight's a bit of a stretch. They're already 6'3 at, uh, you you know, at welterweight, so when they get even taller, that I mean, I, I feel confident about getting in on reach and things, but uh, middleweight's probably a little bit too big for me being 5'8. You know, uh, I, I feel like welterweight's a good home for me, uh, so I, I'm gonna stay there and just focus on that one weight class for me. After the long layoff, you know, and you know, turning things back around here fairly quickly, what kind of pace do you want to keep going forward? Is this something where you want to be able to fight every Two and a half or three months. You know, I was like looking through like somebody like Cowboy Cerrone yeah. fights every ten weeks on yeah, average. Yeah, yeah. Is that the kind of pace you want to keep, or are you uh, more no, of a five six months? Ago? Yeah, I, a few times a year. I think three times a year is a good a good amount. You know, uh, you know, it's something that that I enjoy. I enjoy to compete, and and I look forward to it. So you know, three times a year I think is good for me. And uh, you know, any more than that. As long it just comes as a per fight basis yeah. like this, you know, as long as I wasn't injured or anything before the previous fight and I st still feel good, you know, that'll be fine. But the diet starts to take its toll after six months continuous and you're like, oh, I need a little break, you know, after that. So Do you think that being in one sixty two after the the wide on win, do you think maybe it was better than the that the focus shifted to that fight, that it maybe allowed you to take things a little bit easier, go back home, go back to training and not have to deal with media all during those weeks being you the biggest story in the fight and just yeah it could be i mean i i've never had to really do a lot of media stuff after that fight i actually started having i had like 30 interviews the next week so that was it's different for me but you know I, for, for me there's no added pressure there's no anything you know i do this for myself I, I have fun out there i don't get nervous i don't get worried so you know i i don't think it would have been a factor but you can't really say until you're thrust in that spotlight so for people who might be experiencing UFC for the first time on Wednesday night or seen it live for the first time, what what's the thing that keeps keeps your drive to keep doing this and stuff and what's obviously a thrill sport? What I guess what's the best part about being part of it? Uh, for me it's just the, the thrill of competition. I mean I from the time I was a kid I always wanted to compete in sports and and that's something that I always pursued. And, and when you get past high school, you get past college, then you, you need something to fill that void. If you've been an athlete all your life, then you need that. That's what it is for me. It's just the thrill of competition and the, the win in a UFC fight, especially, but the MMA fight, and especially a knockout afterward. There's no other feeling that I've been able to feel in sports that's like that. The exhilaration that you get is, is what I do it for. That's all. You talked about the diet wearing on you after a while. What's the first thing you like to eat when you're not in training for a fight? Pizza. Yeah, that's what I say all the time. Pizza is the number one thing that I like. Uh, as a matter of fact, after my my last fight uh, in Vegas, I had like I went to three different restaurants and had pizza at three different places over the next 24 hours. So nice. That's what I'm looking forward to. Well, we hope you have a slice on Thursday then. Yeah, we'll do.